Hello and welcome to I Am with Eric Faria. I am your host and it is my pleasure to have here with me today, Stephen Gottlieb, who is a personal empowerment coach. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stephen. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? Good to see you. I'm great, thanks. <laughs> yes, that's good. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the obvious question. What is a personal empowerment coach? Well, you've heard of life coaches. Yes, and, uh, I am one myself. And, so. Yes, and you've heard of healers. I have. Uh, I am someone who blends uh, the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an intuitive energy healer, mm -hmm. and I use that intuition in my personal coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and I call it personal empowerment coaching because really what I'm doing mm -hmm. is I'm looking for ways for people to become empowered, mm -hmm. uh, to get past the box yes. from, let's call maybe some traumatic life experiences. Uh -huh. And I use tools like energy psychology mm -hmm. uh, to supercharge that coaching process. Got it. So can you give me like uh, an example from somebody that you have worked with, like a case that you, you got where you helped somebody? I'll just think of a, a current case. I'm sure mm -hmm. she won't mind me sharing it. Uh, imagine a woman um, in middle age, mm -hmm. a highly skilled professional, sure. uh, having a, a traumatic separation from her family and her work situation. Mm -hmm. Knowing that she wants to move forward, she's got to release the hurt and the trauma from those previous experiences in order to kick off mm -hmm. the, the, the next part of her life. So I would be working together, yeah. uh, resolving those things by going to specific events that happened uh -huh. that really frame out exactly what that traumatic experience is all about and using EFT to resolve that. Mm -hmm. And then encouraging her to reach into the, her own personal resources, mm -hmm. uh, which she has plenty of, to resource and to help her find ways of re-resourcing that so that when we start to move forward with affirmations, it says, I can move forward in a new direction and let go of the past. Mm -hmm. There is a strong sense of yes associated with that rather than and it doesn't quite feel right to say that. I'm not quite there. Yeah. So you mentioned EFT when you were talking about, so it's emotional yeah. freedom technique, correct? Yes, emotional freedom technique. And mm -hmm. for people that don't know about it or have heard of it, but don't really, haven't experienced it, mm -hmm. what is EFT? EFT is a form of psychological acupressure mm -hmm. that anyone can learn to use and is mm -hmm. especially good when used with a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a nutshell, what we do is we feel what we feel emotionally, energetically, when we tune into some issue or problem that we have. Uh -huh. As soon as you take your mind and focus on a disturbing issue, you'll notice some sort of disturbance in the body. Sure. Uh, and as you start tapping, uh -huh. you combine an affirmation which speaks to the truth of that. Even though I have this problem, mm. I deeply accept myself. And the tapping starts to recondition and repattern and counter condition the brain. Uh, where that energy blockage is. When mm -hmm. you think about something that upsets you and you can feel it in your body as an emotion, mm -hmm. your brain is signaling your fight or flight mechanisms to say there's some trouble here. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, mm -hmm. the brain gets a second set of input. Mm -hmm. And it says, wait a second, even though there's trouble associated with this memory, this is calming my nervous system down, so there must be something else to it. It's also affirming that we're here now, even though that was then, I'm here now. Yeah. So by continuously setting up uh -huh. our EFT session mm. with a simple affirmation like that, then we can move through the tapping points to literally resolve where the energy blocks are stuck in our energy system. In this particular case, we're using the Chinese system of acupuncture meridians yes. by tapping on energy meridian endpoints uh -huh. and stimulating the body's nervous system that way uh -huh. and counter conditioning the emotional experience. So if you were to think about a situation, a problem that brought up a disturbance when you tuned into it on a scale of zero to 10, yeah. it's somewhere like a five, a six, a seven, an eight, mm -hmm. a nine, mm -hmm. you know, by tapping through this process, you will notice in a very short period of time that the intensity of your emotional response to that issue is diminishing. Diminishing, yeah. So what is the importance? I kind of know the answer, but I want people to hear it from you. 
What is the importance of healing past traumas? Well, past traumas have conditioned us in many unfortunate ways. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that it does is it sits there as a base level of stress response. Mm. So as life continues, and there's always going to be stressful events mm -hmm. that happen, what happens is as we pick up more stress and more trauma, it reinforces the negative neural pathways in the brain that keep reinforcing the negative experience. And yeah. even though it might be happening now, something happened to you yesterday that really gets you upset, yeah. it might be actually re-triggering the neural pathway that started with the original trauma. Mm -hmm. So that's going to keep bugging you. What happens is, is that you think you're responding to something that happened yesterday, but you're responding to a whole host of stresses that is built upon these original traumas. The worst part of it is that stress is something that kills the body's health. Yeah. kills the body's vibra That's vibrancy. Point. You can't be empowered when you're in a state of heightened stress. Mm -hmm. and it takes you to a place where you're using your mind to try to resolve that problem. And that becomes an, an ego problem. Mm -hmm. Now, an, an ego is being fed through the energy of the emotions that are associated with this stuff, which is mostly unconscious at this point. You're just aware of what happened yesterday that got you really upset, but you don't realize that the intensity of your upset has been conditioned over the years from the original, the original trauma, trauma, which is uh, the root of the whole problem. Yeah. yeah. So, going even further, then, what is the importance of acknowledging the root and actually curing it, if you will, or healing it? Yeah. Well, EFT is very, very interesting because you know EFT practitioners are not medical doctors, and mm -hmm. we don't talk about curing. Yeah. But really, we can resolve trauma as, as severe as extreme post-traumatic stress. Okay. So there's, there's so it's very effective. It's very, very effective, and it's more effective than other tools because up until recently, where mm -hmm. we've understood the neuroscience behind energy psychology, it was thought that post-traumatic stress was a permanent situation wow. that you just had to learn to deal with. Yeah. So for you, you see, do you see that a lot of people still don't know about it? And yeah, yeah. At, that, at that level, a lot of people still don't know. Still don't about know about it. it. Yeah. So w what would you think is the, the thing that would get them interested? Say some, some person who had a very traumatic experience maybe is, uh, was in the army, went abroad, you know, suffers from PTSD yeah. right now. Yeah. What would be the benefit to that person? Oh, the benefits would be immeasurable. Um, one of the things that put EFT on the map mm -hmm. in the 90s yeah. was uh, a very carefully orchestrated study that was done uh, with um, a dozen or so vets with extreme post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. Some of these were v Vietnam vets who Vietnam, have been suffering yeah. for 20 years. Yeah, now, their lives thing. have been dramatically compromised from their PTSD to the point where they can't even live in their own family homes anymore. Wow. And everything that they've tried, yeah. uh, all of the therapy, all of the support, all of the medication, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, still hasn't really given them their life back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And shortly after experiencing even just a few EFT sessions, mm. they started to notice the difference. Like for one example, one person came up and gave one of the practitioners a hug and crying said, that's the first night of sleep that I've had since before the war. What? So, so the, like the evidence yeah, yeah. from the study was that their post-traumatic stress scores dropped below the level of clinical post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. and remained that way. Wow. So it's like a permanent shift. That's right. It's a permanent shift. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, this is a very good point for us to just stop here because we're going to go on a little break, but we're going to be back. So for everybody watching, stick around. I have much more to talk about to, with Steven. So I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. And welcome back to I Am with Eric Faria. I have here today with me once again, Stephen Gottlieb. Pronounce it correctly, right? Got it. Got it. <laughs> so we were talking about PTSD. We were. And you mentioned during the break that you don't have to be a war veteran. No. 
to suffer from PTSD. No, or a hurricane victim or a flood right. victim. Right, or I have mean, gone through like a major... These are obvious things that people recognize right. as trauma. And recently, I'll say recently, the last 20 years, mm -hmm. people involved with EFT and other forms of energy psychology have been um, sent to places where there was tremendous trauma and has given entire communities their lives back from people who are suffering, wow. you know, with, with, with uh, you know, with with PTSD. Right. And yeah. you were talking about like as just regular people from the time that we are infants, yeah. we can have traumas that yeah. we're not even aware of. That's right. As a culture, we don't take trauma seriously. Mm -hmm. but we just say, well, that's life and get over it. But we don't understand what the brain is doing. Yeah. So recent science shows that even an infant left alone from his mother or mm -hmm. her mother uh, crying would say, where, where is my life support? Where is my right. mother? That, something that innocent uh -huh. can start to embed trauma imprints in the brain, which builds upon and builds upon and builds mm -hmm. upon. Uh, there is a very well-known study now, maybe not to this audience, but maybe some of these audience, uh -huh. called the, uh, the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Events, mm -hmm. which tracked people over 40 or 50 years. Uh, and if you score high in childhood trauma, mm -hmm. uh, parents are divorced, accidents, a, a loss of uh, a loved one, mm -hmm. death, uh, illness, accident, yeah. neglect, emotional abuse, alcoholic parents, yeah. missing parents, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. They've tracked that to see that those things now add up that score. The higher the score, the higher the likelihood for chronic illness becoming evident in midlife. Wow. Yeah. And I also can see that addiction also might arise from that, right? Well, it might. You know, uh, if someone is suffering with enough pain, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is causing them to seek pain relief, that could cause addiction to the substance because they're looking for continuous pain relief where they have no other access, or it could have caused physiological pain as well mm -hmm. as psychological pain, and the medication itself might have been so effective at that moment mm -hmm. that it becomes very, very hard to let go of that medication until it becomes addictive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, by all means, of course it can be. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in your experience with all of this work that you do, mm -hmm. what was actually the, the thing or the point where you can just, you know, say, this is where I decided to go into this area, this field, well, and help people in this way? There's there's two parts to that question. Uh, the first one is, what caused me to change my lifestyle around so yeah. that I can embrace that one of as an intuitive healer? Uh -huh. And that was really my own life where I, I reached a point where life started to just push me in a different direction and I wasn't quite sure what. And by happenstance, <laughs> I, I, I enrolled in a program that taught me about intuitive healing, which was great interest to me, but I had no idea about the nuances that mm -hmm. I was being shown. And while working in that field, um, I felt in a very short order, all of a sudden, a natural mastery uh -huh. that I had no rights to. I said, how can I feel so masterful at this when I've spent you know, the last 25, 30 years of my life creating mastery in my other fields, and here I've only been doing this for a year. Yeah. And it feels like it just comes naturally to me. So it was as if I was being guided and given information that was going even beyond the training that I was receiving as an intuitive healer. Mm. So I knew at that point that I needed to honor that and, and move into that direction. And I did certain things personally uh, to make sure that um, I would hold myself accountable. Yeah. To do that. Because I was going to ask, like, how, how did you know that that was the right path? Well, once you realize you have a gift and you have a set of tools that can help people in the way that I was helping people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like you can't keep that to yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. One of those tools was EFT. Mm. And I used EFT uh, as sort of an ancillary tool when I was working with people on the healing table, for example. Mm -hmm. And I would sense this in various different parts of their energy system, their chakras and other things, and I would intuitively get some information and I would inquire with somebody about where I thought there was trouble in their life. Tell me about, uh, you have a sister? Yeah. 
Tell me about your sister. Oh my God, this is the biggest problem in my life is my relationship <laughs> with my sister. So glad that you know that. Well, yeah, that's what intuition does. So sure. you start working with the energy of that and you hit a place where all of a sudden all the emotion involved in, with that stuff starts to come out of them as an mm -hmm. emotional release. And as soon as that would happen, I knew all their energy channels were open for this kind of an input, and then right. I would use EFT, and I would also use EFT to create these pos these positive empowerments uh -huh. that would work greatly towards moving in a direction where now they can release this problem and they can find themselves moving ahead and healing. Yeah. Um, and then one day, many years later, um, when I was having some personal physical issues that mm -hmm. were that were really hard for me, um, I would find myself being my own energy mechanic or chiropractic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you were. The only person who could fix me was me going, well, what energetic buttons do I need to push to get myself, I mean, my back would be out, mm -hmm. and I'm going, mm, is it this, is it, oh, here's the button. And it, I, I'd press an energetic thing in my body, and all of a sudden, ah, that's good. Yeah. I like that. And then one day, I couldn't find the button. Oh. And I was going, what am I going to do about this? And then I thought, well, why don't I just tap on the problem? Even though I can't seem to fix myself today, and I'm in this pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. And I started tapping through the idea that the problem was that I couldn't find a way to easily fix myself. Yeah. And after a couple of tapping rounds, all of a sudden I noticed that the pain was gone. Oh. And I went, wait a second. I didn't know EFT can do that. <laughs> so when I really went back and started researching EFT in mm -hmm. earnest. Then I started to substitute all of the healing things that I was doing with my hand mm -hmm. by just doing EFT with people. Mm -hmm. And the results that I got were so remarkable that at that point, I committed myself to be the best EFT practitioner I could possibly be. Great. And just before we go into the next break, I know it goes by really fast. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it does. Um, but what would you say is the one thing, or like the top two, that actually lets people stay where they are, where it's very hard for them to actually move past their traumas and move into the new phase of their lives. Because for you, you were able to listen to the signs and actually do something about it. But why do you think it's so hard for people to change their habits and to take that first step? Well, I think what happened to me was extraordinary, and I think it's part of what many people will recognize mm. as a form of a midlife crisis. Oh. You do what you're supposed to do, yeah. and, and, you, and you get to the early part of adulthood, and you do what you do there. But we enter a certain phase. Mm -hmm. Astrologists might call this something like a Chiron return, where all of a sudden new energy flows into our life, mm -hmm. and things that aren't working for us tend to fall apart. And we look at these things as personal tragedies, but they're really opportunities for us to now start to shift to where we're really meant to be. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so I think that's what kind of happened to me. So uh, people get stuck for a lot of reasons, but yeah. I think maybe if I understand your question correctly, the biggest reason people are stuck there is because they don't recognize that like a butterfly, you know, you need to like break through you know, being a caterpillar into, and, and, it, and it feels like death. It feels like death to move into another part of your life. Uh, and there's this great unknown. But if you're willing to be able to follow the signs, and sometimes the signs are now it's time to deal with old psychological trauma mm -hmm. so that we can finally get rid of this, mm -hmm. um, let's do the work. And as we do the work, now we're more in the moment. Now mm -hmm. we can start to create a future mm -hmm. that works for us because before, we didn't see the possibilities because we're still stuck with the traumatic imprints from the past. Perfect. This is a perfect stopping point. <laughs> so we're going to go to break now, but stick with us. I have more with Stephen coming up. And welcome back to I Am with Eric Faria. I am here once again with my guest, Stephen Gottlieb. So I wanted to ask about the empowerment. We were mentioning it yes. during the break. Yes. So, okay, so now we know that we have traumas. Now yes. we know that there are things that we can do, such as the EFT, to yes. work. And how yes. do we get to the empowerment phase? Ooh, that's great. Um, 
A lot of people will ask when we do EFT why it's necessary to go to the negative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if I say think about your problem and tune into your problem, give language to your problem, so many people have been conditioned through po positive psychology not to think negatively. Oh. But your mind is thinking negatively anyway <laughs> yes. because it's been wired that way. Exactly. So if you think that you can counter condition the negative wiring just by thinking positively, um, that may not be the case, because every mm. time you try to think positively about something, your mind is going, no, that's not possible right. because of all the negative imprinting. So what I do when I do energy psychology coaching and I start to move towards empowerment coaching, uh -huh. I basically work with people with conventional EFT coaching, mm -hmm. clinical EFT, which means we're looking to find emotions and other physiological aspects that go along with the memory of these events or the situations right. of problems. And as we explore them closely enough, we'll keep kicking up sensations of disturbances. And as we tap on the sensations of disturbances around all different parts of the story of a specific event mm -hmm. that was traumatizing and clear that, mm. now I go ahead and move it in an empowerment direction, which means I'm going to say, if we can overcome this and have a positive affirmation that really felt true if we said it, yeah, yeah. what might that affirmation be? Uh -huh. So I work with them uh, to create something that's very powerful. If it were true, it would feel very powerful. Right. And it could be as simple as something that I can be loved or I can let go of this problem or I can heal or be healed. I mean, those are very, very powerful things. Mm -hmm. And then I do an energetic test. Mm. And that energetic test is something that I could do directly with them as a muscle test, mm -hmm. or I can do it psychically with their permission, and I can tap into their energy field to find out that when they say that information, whether or not they're completely coherent with that, all yeah. parts of them are lined up going, yeah, 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 or if there's some parts of them that may be subconscious that are saying no. Yeah. Now, there may be conscious parts of them that are saying no. So I say, well, when you say this affirmation, that would be very empowering if it were true, scale mm -hmm. of one to 10, it's a 10. How close to a 10 are we? And if it's only a four or five or a three or a two, mm -hmm. you know, well, why is that? You know, because a feeling comes up and a belief system comes up. Yeah. And it may be something that in EFT we call tail -ender. So it's like, if I can be loved, I can be loved might be the affirmation we want to, but then you say it, and all of a sudden the mind goes, yeah, right. Like, you know, yeah. who's going to love me? Like, that's going to yeah, happen. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. I've been trying to get love for all of these years, and every time it's been a disaster. Yeah. So you tune in and write all those things down, and those are things that you can tap on and clear. Yeah. But many of the things that hold people stuck uh -huh. from an affirmation coming up energetically is true mm -hmm. are subconscious blocks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those blocks have to do with belief systems, trust, feeling, knowing, right. you might believe that you can be loved, yeah. but the part of you that feels that they can be loved might be broken. Mm -hmm. Or you might know... Or your values around love, right? Well, I just thought about it, that. All yeah. kinds of things can yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. So the personal values that people go, well, they might say, I don't deserve to be loved. I know I don't deserve to be loved. And I can test to see if that's true or not. Yeah. You know, And it might be that it's not that they don't deserve it. It's just they don't feel that they can be loved. Mm. And it might not be that they don't feel that they can be loved, but it might not be that being loved, it's not safe to have that. It might not be that it's not safe. It might be that they don't trust it. Yeah. So when I link up just those right keywords that mm -hmm. the brain is using to link to the core wound, whatever that mm. might be, and I don't know what the core wound is, but I know what the keyword link is, then I can start having them tap and say, even though it's not safe for me to be loved, mm -hmm. I deeply and completely accept myself, even though I don't trust I can be loved, mm. I deeply and completely accept myself. And that literally rewires the brain from the no's to the yeses. And when we've cleared out all the no's and all we have left is yeses, mm -hmm. when you say something like, I can be loved, all of a sudden, it feels completely different. Mm. They go, wow, it actually feels true now. And that is the best way I know to finish off my empowerment work with people. It's the thing that I do that I know can create the biggest profound change in a person's life. Yeah, and I, I can feel like from 
after doing the work with you, for example, like yeah. that, having a session, right? Mm -hmm. And after you you have changed your mindset that actually the actions will follow is yeah. that it's that accurate yeah well it's accurate but let me just correct one thing mm. you, no, you don't use your mind to change your mindset mm -hmm. the wiring of the mind has been shifted because the parts that were subconscious that were saying no to the affirmation mm -hmm. are no longer active Oh, I see. So, you're so it's even deeper. Re you're reprogramming yeah. the conscious or subconscious thing that says no to what you want right. to affirm yes to, and the no isn't there anymore. Oh, it's yeah. the tapping yeah, yeah, yeah. that creates the shift in the brain. You don't have to do anything. It's just follow along with the tapping and the, and the reverse affirmations that I use to create those shifts. Yeah, because you even mentioned something when we met the first time that the cellular, at the cellular level... Now, like your body knows everything that has happened to you since you were a baby. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And it may, it, it, the memory is there. The memory is there. But the stress response might not be active until you think about a particular problem. Or experience yeah. something. Right. So if you think about an, a negative experience, mm -hmm. if the negative experience is still active mm. in a negative way, it'll automatically trigger a stress response mm -hmm. that is the same stress response that is activated by anything that scares you, any fight or flight fear that comes up. It's the same thing. Yeah. So whether you're aware of it or not, just by having the memory mm -hmm. of something that is upsetting to you, anytime you have a thought about it, it automatically resonates as a negative experience throughout your entire body. Wow. Yeah, so I can definitely see how it can be very debilitating. Absolutely, and because this yeah. is not known, mm -hmm. that this is going on at this level, and what are you, what are you supposed to do with these negative yeah. thoughts? Everybody yeah. has negative thoughts, right? Yeah. So people feel like there's no hope to, it, for this. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden you have something like EFT that comes along mm -hmm. that changes all of that. It's a completely new paradigm for psychological, emotional healing, and it has the potential to create physical healing as well because of that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And... Just before we go, because I know we have a lot more to talk about, so we're actually going to do a second episode. That's great. Um, so what is something that people can do, people that are watching or listening to us now, that yeah. they can do right now yeah. um, that can help them maybe, you know, with something that is going on in their lives? Uh, I would suggest learning about EFT. Uh, first place to start would be at the... Um, website called EFTUniverse.com mm -hmm. where you can get all kinds of information about EFT. Uh, the other thing they can do is, quite frankly, just give me a call yeah, all for his info a will be, private consultation, yes. a no-charge private consultation, mm -hmm. where we can discuss their particular situation and to see if uh, energy psychology coaching or empowerment coaching with me would be something that they would want to do. You have to understand that this can change people's lives in a reasonably short period of time. Yes. Even if people were suffering a long time with something that therapy and other kind of approaches to solving problems and other self-help approaches have not been able to touch, mm -hmm. simply because we really haven't actually been doing any tapping. The somatic input while we do this work is extremely important to change the way the brain is wired. Amazing. Okay, so we have a lot more to talk about with Stephen Gottlieb, and we're going to do an episode number two. So for everybody watching, we'll be back next week with a new episode, and I'll see you then.